Hi everyone, welcome to STEM Zebra. My name is Tejas Rakshe. Today we're going to talk about the theory of SI system and unit conversion. I made a video earlier uh, talking about the same topic, but uh, without using any mathematics, I introduced the topic to you. Hopefully you got a chance, you got a chance to watch that video. If not, I encourage you to do it. Uh, if you haven't visited our website, it's www.stemzebra.org. I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, if you go to the website, click on the high school physics tab and there I have uh, a table with all the videos and uh, uh, supplementary material links to supplementary material so hopefully you'll find that useful okay let's get started uh, in our previous discussion I mentioned that uh, there are certain fundamental quantities for measurements and they are quite useful in physics do you remember what uh, those were? Uh, if not, I can quickly write them down for you for reference. We said the fundamental quantities of measurements were time, like second, an hour, whatever, right? Uh, length, such as uh, a foot, a meter, yard, inches, centimeter, right? All those are examples of lengths. Uh, then the next one is mass. Mass is something people normally call it weight. Okay, so I'll just put it in quotes, weight. But in physics, the term weight means something else. Uh, we will talk about it later, but what we're talking about here is mass, although sometimes it's referred to as weight. Um, for example, if you go to the grocery store, you'll find lots of items with uh, something like weight two pounds or weight half a kilogram or something like that. In reality, they mean mass. So these three are the, uh, the most fundamental quantities. And uh, there are a few other quantities as well. This is not the complete list. Uh, but this really forms the basis of our discussion. Now, I'll write down a few other quantities. We're not going to talk in detail about it. Okay. Uh, one is temperature. And the other one is current, electric current. Now, temperature, of course, you know what that means, right? You know, today's temperature was so many... Fahrenheit or so many Celsius, etc. Uh, electric current, you see your appliances at home, there'll be a rating written on it, something like, you know, you know, one amp, two amp, 10 amp, whatever, right? So that's the electric current. Now, apart from these, there are, there are a couple of others that are a little more obscure and you may not know what those mean. That is perfectly okay. I'll uh, write them down, but don't worry if you don't understand what they are. Uh, one is uh, the amount of substance uh, is expressed in mole. If you're taking a chemistry uh, class, you might have heard about it, but if not, again, don't worry. Uh, substance and uh, another one is uh, luminous intensity. That's, these, these are a little bit more obscure for our discussion, so we won't worry about these. Um, so this one and this one, definitely we're not going to talk about it. These two uh, will be a part of the physics course, but today 
they are a little bit more advanced for today's discussion. So we will not talk about these today as well. Uh, temperature, in fact, is requires a really separate uh, lesson <laughs> and discussion because the way Fahrenheit and Celsius and, uh, and uh, the, the, the actual unit that we'll use quite frequently is Kelvin. The way it works is very different from some of the other ones. So th that's not a, a trivial uh, discussion. Okay, so we won't talk about that today. Our discussion today is going to be focused on this. Okay, these three. So these other ones, we can forget about it for now. So now that you have these three, uh, well, of course, in, in your daily life, you encounter quantities that are not just time, length, and mass. There are a lot of other things you encounter. So can you translate those in terms of time, length, and mass? Let's say you're driving or uh, you're, you, you know, your parents are driving or somebody else is driving. Uh, you're driving at a certain speed or there's a speed limit written on it, right? It's, it, what is the unit there? It says uh, miles per hour, right? That's the speed. Or in, in some other countries, uh, right, it'll be kilometers per hour, but either way, it's some kind of distance divided by time, right? Miles per hour means distance divided by time. Uh, in other words, it's length divided by time. So you see, even though the, 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 this quantity speed was different, right? It wasn't time, length, or mass, but we could express it in terms of length divided by time which is exactly what speed is, right? You know, in a certain duration of time, how far you can go. That's called the speed. Uh, how about something else like uh, um, area? Let's say you're thinking about a, a piece of land and you're talking about, um, say, a 10 meter by 5 meter, right? So you have a piece of land here. It's 10 meter by 5 meter, so you know that the area is 50 meter square. This is the area. So area is a separate quantity, but it's meter square. It's, it's this meter distance times this distance. So it's a length times length. So again, you see, using this fundamental quantity, we could express area. How about something else like volume? Right, you buy uh, milk in grocery store in a gallon or something like that. Uh, so what does that volume mean? It means something that fits in a three-dimensional box, if you want to call it. So the volume is the space inside that box. But how do you express it? Uh, it? It could be like gallon or liter or something. But in, what does that mean? That means uh, it's this length times this length times this length. So it's length times, I'm going to sh shorthand this a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to call it L for length times length times length. So volume, right, this is volume. is, again, expressed in terms of this fundamental quantity, length. Uh, how about density? Do you remember density? You might have taken some other uh, physics course earlier. Uh, what does density mean? Is amount of mass packed in a certain volume. So it's density is amount of mass in certain volume. But we know mass is a fundamental quantity. So I'm going to again shorthand it as M for mass, right? So let's call this T, L, and M. So in other words, mass uh, density can be 
represented as mass divided by volume. But volume we just said is length time length time length. So it's length times length length time length. So again, density we represented in terms of the fundamental quantity. So you see that uh, the idea behind defining a, uh, a fundamental set of quantities is that you can then define all the other more complicated quantities in terms of those fundamental quantities, which means that you don't have to invent a, a set of quantities every single time, right? You can use, you can define certain fundamental principles and then you can then translate them to uh, more complex quantities. There are much more complex quantities than density or volume, right? Energy or power or, uh, you know, in electricity and magnetism, there are like many uh, uh, constants that have their own dimensions, but they can all be represented in some form using the fundamental quantity. Okay, so far you with me? Uh, I'll give you another interesting example, uh, just for fun. Have you seen this equation? E equals mc square. I'm sure most of you have seen it. Uh, I mean, I know elementary school kids who have seen it, they don't know what it means. Uh, a lot of grown-ups also don't know what it means really, but uh, it uh, relates energy with mass and speed of light. So what it says is that this part, the left-hand side, is the energy. This is mass. And C here, C is uh, the speed of light. Okay, this is considered Einstein's famous equation. So what it says is that if you could convert a certain mass fully into energy, then you would uh, you could generate this much energy if you could convert this much mass. So something like a nuclear reaction, you can see how much mass vanishes in that nuclear reaction. And speed of light is really large, so energy produces is a big number. Uh, we're not gonna talk about this now, like what it really means, right? It's a separate chapter, in fact. Uh, separate discussion, but, but the, the point I'm trying to make here is this. Uh, can you use the what we just learned um, about the, uh, the these fundamental quantities of time, uh, length, and mass for this equation? So on the left side is energy, and we probably don't know how to treat this, but how about on the right side? This is mass. So let's call it mass m. Uh, th this mass is the is the convention we used previously, right? To represent this as mass, and the c is speed of light. Uh, speed of light is just speed. So we just said speed means uh, length divided by time. But it's c square, so you need another length divided by time. So this is uh, mass length square divided by time square. So you know that energy can be represented as mass times length square divided by time squared. In fact, you can take any expression of energy, any expression ever available, and it will always have these dimensions. They're called dimensions. It'll always have these dimensions, mass times length square divided by time square, always. And in fact, if you're solving a problem and you're expecting your answer to be energy, and you got an answer, but the answer doesn't have, the, the dimensions are not mass times length squared divided times squared. That means you did something wrong, okay? Uh, so anyway, just, just something interesting uh, based on what we have learned so far. 
I want to remind you of one thing. Uh, I, I use the word remind, meaning I hope you have seen this before, but I, if not, then that's okay. You can learn it now. Uh, we have been using uh, a certain convention. Uh, so let's say that you're driving at a speed of 60 miles per hour. Okay, so you can write it as miles per hour, but you could also write it as 60 miles times hour to the power negative one. To the power negative one means it's in the denominator. Okay, so this is something I want, I want to make sure you all know this. If I write uh, x to the power negative 2, I want everybody to know how to use this. That's, this means 1 divided by x squared. Okay, how about something like uh, x squared y negative 3? What does this mean? This means x squared divided by y cubed. This negative 3 uh, comes down here in the denominator. What about x to the power 0? This is equal to 1, assuming x is not 0. Otherwise, it's, it's a weird case. Uh, so I hope you all know how to deal with this type of notation. I hope you have done it in algebra or something before. Because in physics, quite often, they, the, both these are used interchangeably. Uh, one example is, earlier we said that units of energy, the, the, the dimensions of energy are mass times uh, length squared divided by time squared. So, in, oh, sorry. So instead of writing it like this, I could have written it as mass L length square time to the power negative two. These two are the same thing. All right. So hopefully, uh, either you have seen this before, or if you've not, then. Uh, you can you can learn from this and you'll see more of these examples coming up now while we're at it there's one more thing i want to remind you of or teach you if you haven't seen it before it's using 10 to the power okay so if i have a number let's say 300 i can write it as 3 times 100 right uh, but what is 100? 100 is 3, uh, I'm sorry, 100 is 10 to the power 2. Okay, so uh, the, what I want you to uh, remember is 10 to the power 1 is just 10. 10 to the power 2 is 100. 10 to the power 3 is 1000, you know, etc. Uh, now, what about negative powers, right? 10 to the power negative 1 is what? Remember, negative means you can put it in the denominator. So it's 1 divided by 10. What about 10 to the power negative 2? It's 1 divided by 100, right? Because negative 2 means you can bring it in the denominator. Uh, that, that's how you get rid of the negative, right? Uh, hopefully, you, you all know how to deal with these things. Although I've seen sometimes uh, students make these mistakes, if, especially they are really, um, you know, trying to understand a lot of things, a little bit confused or, you know, not sure how to solve a problem. And they'll do something like, oh, 10 to the power negative 2 equals uh, negative 100 or something like that. Okay, they, I've, I've seen students do that. So this is why I want to make sure that you know that in the... When the negative up, uh, up, uh, when the, the the negative number is in the exponent, that means you can bring that number in the denominator like this. Okay, so th this is this is not correct. Okay, similarly, ten to the power 
negative 3 is 1 divided by, okay. Uh, another thing to remember is uh, learning how to combine these pow different powers of 10. So if I had 10 to the power 3 times 10 to the power negative 2, what will I do? This equals 10 to the power 3 minus 2 in, in the in the exponent, which is 10 to the power 1, which is this 10. How about 10 to the power minus 1 times 10 to the power negative 2? This equals 10 to the power negative 3, which is 1 divided by 1,000. Um, what else? Do you, do you want to keep doing this? We could do more of these. Now let's do one more, okay? Let's say, um, hopefully you can still see the screen. Ten to the power three times ten to the power negative two. Uh, let's do something else. Okay, I already did negative two there. Ten to the power negative four times ten to the power five. What is this? This is. 10 to the power in parentheses 3 minus 4 plus 5, which is what? Which is 10 to the power 4, which is 10,000. Okay, so you should be comfortable dealing with the powers of 10. Because again, in, while solving physics problems, these are quite common. And I know some of you are, are some of you are thinking, "Well, I have a calculator, right? The calculator does it for me." But trust me, and really trust me, because I've seen this happen over and over and over again. If you're not comfortable dealing with certain kinds of numbers, just having a calculator in your hand. Uh, is not always helpful. I mean, sometimes you'll end up getting the right answer, but there is a very high likelihood that you'll make a mistake if you're not sure how to interpret those numbers. Okay, it's very easy to just punch a wrong key while uh, using your calculator or, or somehow interpret the number in a wrong way and then punch it into the calculator. You'll get a wrong answer, and you won't even know that you got a wrong answer because you, you think the calculator did the right thing. Uh, but you need to be able to see those numbers and understand how they how they interact with each other and what kind of answer to expect. Okay, So the, the calculator should just be sort of an additional helper, right? The calculator is not replacing a part of your brain. Okay, It's just to provide you a little bit of help doing the calculation. So hopefully this is clear to you. I'm sure you can find a lot of problems that maybe I'll include some when we do our uh, um, problem solving session. I'll include a few problems of this kind. Okay. Okay. So we started talking about uh, these dimensions or fundamental quantities, and then I changed the gears a little bit and went into exponents and powers of 10. Now let's try to combine all of that, okay? And let's see if it makes sense. Hopefully it'll make sense. I'll adjust the camera a little bit. Okay. So let's talk about SI system. Okay, and if you remember, SI stands for uh, International standard and it's in French or something. So that's why it's SI, not IS. Uh, sure, you can just look it up. So SI system is this uh, system of measurements or system of units that's agreed upon by scientists. And this is what is almost always used in scientific calculations. I'm sure there are exceptions somewhere. And again, if you know, look at your exam or whatever your teacher is asking you to do, and do it that way. But this is a very common system, and in fact, most physics textbooks of international standards use SI system. So we talked about three quantities, right? Uh, what was that? 
time, length, and mass. Uh, by the way, this T is also, uh, when we talk about temperature, then, you know, you, there's also a T, right? But for now, we're just talking about time, okay? Uh, maybe we'll use something else for temperature. Um, so, time, length, and mass. So, for time, the SI system unit is second. And just your normal second, nothing special, right? For length, the unit is meter. Right? I have this uh, measuring tape here. Right? There's, there's uh, centimeters here and... Can you read it? Yeah. Okay, centimeter here and, uh, you know, 100 centimeter is a meter. So... Uh, meter is the SI system unit for length. For mass, it's kilogram. And we're not going to talk about the rest of it, like the uh, electric current and um, temperature and intensity and uh, substance mole and all that. We're not going to talk about that. Just these three. So uh, the, the way these are defined is quite interesting. I don't want to spend time today talking about how these are defined. But if you have a textbook, if you're using a textbook, uh, I'm sh I have a feeling that it'll tell you, give you a story of how these are defined. Uh, like kilogram, for example, there's like a, a pristine standard kept somewhere in France or something like that, uh, which is defined as one kilogram. Uh, meter and second are defined a little bit more scientifically. Uh, you know, six, second uses the cesium atomic clock. Uh, I, I'm sure you have heard this term atomic clock somewhere, right? Sometimes, in fact, this, they uh, sell these clocks that uh, tune themselves according to the radio signals, and uh, there they mention atomic clock or something like that. So this is a really interesting story behind how these are defined. In fact, these were defined differently earlier because the technology we have today is not the same as what we had 50 years ago. So the definition has become more and more precise. Uh, but it's a very long story, and I don't want to get into that now. So, uh, so, so I think it's also interesting to remember. So, w w what about a system that's not SI? You know, what what other systems are there, right? Uh, so, if you if you're talking about, let's say, um, I'll use a different color here just to uh, denote that we're talking about something else. So, something like if you talk about an hour, right? An hour or a day is not SI system. Um, I will move myself. Uh, oops, sorry. I will move myself a little bit so that you can read this. Okay. Um, so an hour or day is is not SI system. How about length? Uh, inch is not SI system. Uh, mile is not a size system. Kilogram, uh, pounds, right, or pound. Uh, this, this mark, this is a thick marker, so it's kind of hard to write with this. Uh, pound is is not a size system. Um, what else? Ounce. That's not a size system. So you might say, so these are not SI, right? Not SI. So you might say, oh, okay, a meter. What about kilometer? Is kilometer SI? All right, th there we're talk gonna talk about something called a metric system, okay? Metric system. What's a metric system? Um, <coughs> metric system goes with the use of SI system. So they are, uh, they are buddies. Why are they buddies? Because you see that a meter is about what? About, you know, this long, right? You're a little bit longer than your arm or something like that. Uh, so how about in talking about longer distances? Then you can talk about kilometer. So the 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 key the kilo or kilo right k i l o 
that comes in on top of the meter. So that's the metric system. That means you can take the meter and expand it as kilometer. Uh, you can make a smaller unit called centimeter, but again, it's centimeter millimeter so if you look at this tape again my favorite tape here you see there's a really tiny things here called uh, let me change the screen maybe you can see it there you see uh, the the bottom one is a centimeter the big ones are centimeter and the really tiny ones at the bottom they are millimeter but again they're millimeter so they are derived from meter so anything that uses these uh, second meter kilogram and converts them you, that that system is called the metric system okay and uh, this is where the power of 10 that we were talking about earlier right 10 to the power this 10 to the power that etc uh, that'll come in really handy okay so let's switch to that uh, i will erase this part okay the one that's not si i, I hope you understand that uh, i'll erase this in fact i'll write it on a a different sheet here I think that'll make it easier a different pad the metric system goes like this um, the let, let's it goes in the powers of 10 okay so so it goes like this uh, we we set a one here just for reference. Um, ten to the power one, ten to the power two, ten to the power three. There's there's more, but we'll just stop here for now. Uh, ten to the power negative one, ten to the power negative two, ten to the power negative three. Okay. So this is uh, wh whatever unit we defined. So in fact. Uh, this could be uh, this could be meter. This could be second. Uh, and the third one is a little bit confusing. It's actually gram. Even though I said earlier, uh, the SI system itself, this kilogram, right? We call that as SI system kilogram. Uh, but that means, but we start off with gram, okay? Uh, if it's 10 to the power 1, it's called a deca. D-E-C-A, deca. 10 to the power 2 is called hecto. And by the way, these are very uncommon, okay? Most people do not use deca and hecto while while talking at all but this is the scientific name 10 to the power 3 is called a kilo I, this kilo you heard right kilogram kilogram kilometer right it's not kilometer it's, it's, I mean, it depends on how, on how you pronounce it uh, it's kilometer uh, this is kilosecond but it's very uncommon most people don't use kilosecond uh, if it's 10 to the power negative 1, meaning di divided by 10, it's uh, deci. This is called a centi, S-E-N-T-I, and this is called the milli. Um, you could go even higher and lower. Uh, now, I'm not going to go in steps of 1 because they, they'll be kind of difficult to write. So, 10 to the power negative 6 is micro. 10 to the power negative 9 is called nano. Right? 10 to the power negative 12 is called pico. I'm, I'm not going to write all of these, right? Uh, but you get the idea. So, 10 to the power 6 on this side, it's called um, mega. Sorry, I can write this. Ten to the power nine is called a giga. Hopefully, you can still see this. 
So, so I, I would start with, you can start with this and then use this uh, sort of prefix, right? And say that, well, one gram, but a thousand of those is called a kilogram. So 10 to the power three is thousand. Remember that? We talked about it a couple of minutes ago. 10 to the power three means thousand. 10 to the power negative three means divided by a thousand. So a gram divided by a thousand is a milligram. A gram divided by a million is a microgram. Similarly, so some of these are more common uh, and some of these are, you probably have never heard of those combinations specifically because people don't use like, uh, like hectosecond or something like that. I've personally never heard of that, but technically that's how you combine them. So you say, uh, uh, now you know what a centimeter is, right? A centi is here, meaning hundredth, right? 10 to the power negative two means 10, oh, sorry, one divided by hundred. So that means a centimeter is a meter divided by a hundred, which is exactly what it is, right? Hundred centimeter make one meter, right? Uh, a millimeter is, meter, a millimeter is one meter divided by a thousand. That's exactly what a millimeter is. If you actually count it on a, on a meter scale, a thousand little millimeters make a meter. Uh, how about, uh, you know, a gram? We already talked about a kilogram, right? Thousand gram, thousand gram make a kilogram. Um, a nanometer is a meter divided by a billion. 10 to the power nine is a billion, right? 10 to the power six is a million. So, uh, this powers of 10 makes this really easy to deal with, okay? As opposed to some other system, like if you're trying to use a mile and a yard or feet or something like that, like it's not a power of 10. So those calculations becomes very clumsy. Whereas the metric system makes the, the calculations very easy and clean, and you can deal with powers of 10 really easily while doing calculations. So the SI system, remember, when I talk about the SI system itself, and I'll, I'll remind you here, the SI system is a second meter kilogram. Okay, that's the SI system. Gram becomes, a gram technically is not SI system, but it's related to SI system through the metric system. So it's just sort of a, a clean conversion of SI system. But something like pound or ounce, that's completely different, right? That is not related to SI system at all, okay? So a lot of the, uh, equations that you'll see in physics, they use specifically SI system. So what it means is, and I want you to hear this very uh, carefully, if you wanna use SI system to solve your problem, it means that you need to convert all your data, all the data you have to SI system, okay? If you don't, you'll end up mixing things. Let's say you have, you know, some measurement done in centimeter and some in meter and some in yard, right? You can't add them. You have to convert them to one system. And then you would use SI system. You'll convert all, all your data to SI system, to meter, and then, then combine it. Remember, you can always use power of 10 to, for large numbers. So let's say you got a, uh, something like, you know, you got 300, 3,847 meter, even let's make it larger, right, to five. So 384,725 meter. Okay, so this is a, a weird number. So, you know, you might end up something like approximating this to 3.9 to 
to the power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to the power 5 meter. Okay, this is, this is, this is a sign of approximate, like the wiggly equal. This is approximate. So this is approximately that, but it's still in meter. And at the end, when you have the answer, you can convert it to whichever unit you want or whichever unit is, is, um, makes sense. But to do the calculations, it's quite often easy to use the SI system entirely. Okay. Uh, now, what, now, what did I just say? That means that if you have data that's in different systems, you need to you need to know how to convert it to a, a single system so that you can add it you can subtract it you can multiply divide it correctly okay so let's jump into that and uh, learn how to actually do this unit conversion all right so i talked about a bunch of things so far okay uh, i hope you understood those now we're going to start talking about unit conversion i'll teach you how to do that and, and why to do it the, the way we're going to do it. But uh, please make sure that you have understood the things so far. If you think you have any doubt, then pause the video, uh, go back, maybe listen to it again. Uh, by the way, if you want to listen to it on YouTube, you can always increase the speed a little bit, right? That way you can still hear and understand what's being said, but at the same time, you save some time. Uh, so anyway so make sure you all that is clearly understood before you attempt to do this okay otherwise you'll find it a little bit difficult so we're going to talk about unit conversion and why is the unit conversion important again i hope you understand that because so that's what we've been talking about so far unit conversion is important because to solve any physics problem or or any problem in science in general you have to have things in the same system, uh, right? Or, or even something like uh, I gave an example in my previous talk, like you have, let's say, some money in uh, dollar and some money in Japanese yen, and you want to know how much it is combined. You can't just add the two numbers. You have to convert one to the other. You can, just, you can convert both to dollars and add them and then express that number, or you can convert both to yen and add them and express the number. Uh, or for that matter, you can convert it to some other currency. That's fine as well. But as long as they're the same, same unit, same currency, then you can add them. And in physics, quite often, you don't get consistent. You, your data may not all be consistent. It might be coming from different systems. Uh, also, there are these constants that are available to you, uh, but they are in a specific system. And typically, they are in SI system. So it makes sense quite often to convert all your units to SI system and then do the number manipulation, okay? So it's extremely critical to learn how to do the unit conversion. Otherwise, you will make a mistake while solving the problem. And uh, even later, when you go to college, right, if you're uh, going for a degree in STEM field, uh, it is just, just really important to know how to convert these units. Okay, so let me let me change the camera so that you can uh, see my writing pad here. All right, so we're going to talk about. Oh, um, camera has shifted a little bit. Okay, so we're going to talk about unit conversion. The key to converting unit is multiply or divide, it doesn't matter, by one. Uh, what happens if you multiply or divide a number by one? Do you remember that? Nothing happens, right? It's the same number. Let's say I do 70. 5.8 multiplied by 1 is what? 75.8. Same thing. So that's not very interesting, right? It's actually really interesting, okay? So why is that interesting? Let's say, let's take an example, okay? I'll, I'll make it approximate. Uh, 
one mile one mile equals how many kilometers let's say 1.6 kilometers it's a little bit more than that but we're going to approximate okay now pay close attention like pay close attention one mile equals 1.6 kilometers i have written the unit here it is a must that you write the unit you can say 1 equals 1.6 that is not correct okay so you can't say that so you have to say 1 mile equals 1.6 kilometers right in all your physics problems always 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 write the unit as a part of your equation while you're solving it don't try to put the unit just later at the end okay I, I can't explain to you enough how often I've seen students do that. They just write the numbers, try to do the calculation, and at the end, they try to put some units on it. The, you're going to get it wrong if you try to do it that way. Make the, when you write down the equation, put the unit as a part of that equation. Okay? Um, I mean, when you're writing the numbers, don't just write the number add the unit to it okay so one mile equals 1.6 kilometer this is actually algebraically correct right this equal is not you know just some fuzzy equal it is actually equal so what if i divide both sides by 1.6 kilometers right i divide both sides by 1.6 kilometers what does it say 1.6 kilometer divided by 1.6 kilometer is what? 1, right? Mm, okay, so can I write 1 equals 1 mile divided by 1.6 kilometer? This is correct. That's exactly what I've written here. You could also, you could have divided it both sides by 1 mile instead of 1.6 kilometer. In that case, you would have gotten 1 equal to 1.6 kilometer divided by 1 mile. That is also correct. Right? Of course, because this is 1 and the inverse of that, this is the inverse of that. And inverse of 1 is 1. So that is also 1. So what it means is that you can multiply anything by this or that and it shouldn't change, right? This one doesn't have a unit to it, so you can multiply anything by this one. So how about, uh, I, I'm gonna erase this a little bit, okay, to make some space, hopefully you, you got, you understood what I'm trying to do here. So let's say I ask you, hey, um, you know, I have, uh, I need to travel uh, 13 kilometers. How much is it in miles? How will I do this? It's hard, right? But what if I say 13 kilometers multiplied by 1? But I had to get the right 1. I had to get the correct 1. I got two ones, remember? So I'll get the correct 1. And the correct 1 is this. And I definitely should use a different color here. The correct 1 is uh one mile divided by 1.6 kilometer why did i choose this one there are two of them i choose i chose this because this way i have a kilometer here and a kilometer here so i can cancel this kilometer sorry this kilometer with this kilometer Right? Numerator kilometer, denominator kilometer. They're both gone. What I have is mile. So, in other words, 13. 13 remains the way it is, right? We just got rid of the kilometer, not the 13. Same way here. 1.6 is here. The kilometer is gone. So, 13 times 1 divided by 1.6 mile 
answer, right? 13 multiplied by 1 divided by 1 plus x mile. This is, what's, uh, this is what I'm left with. So now I can, now if I want to, I can use a calculator and do that calculation. Right, now I can say, okay, now I'm going to do uh, 13. I don't need to multiply by 1 here, right, because that's just 13, uh, divided by 1.6. That's 8.125. Okay, so it's, let's call it 8.1. So it's 8.1 mile. 13 kilometers is 8.1 mile. So how did we get to this? We got to this by multiplying by 1, by multiplying by the correct one. What if I had instead multiplied by, what if I had done it like this? I had done it like 13 kilometers times uh, 1.6 kilometer divided by one mile. This was the this was the other one. What if I had done like this? This makes no sense because then I cannot really cancel this kilometer with this mile and then this kilometer. Then then I'm stuck with some weirdo thing, right? This doesn't really help me. Because I'm trying to convert kilometer to miles. So I need to get rid of miles and instead get mile oh, sorry. Said it wrong. I need to get rid of kilometers and get miles. The way to do it is add, sorry, multiply by one in such a way that the the unit you don't want gets canceled, and the unit you want stays or in fact gets inserted. Okay, I'll give you another example. Okay, hopefully you got this. So uh, this this one would not work, right? This thing would not work. All right, so. Another example. And this time, I'm going to pick a little bit more complex examples. Let's say that I'm driving at 65 miles per hour. Convert it to meter per second. How do I do that? Okay, so on the left side is miles per hour. On the right side is meter per second. So to I, I need so what are the different quantities here? There's length, which is miles here and meter here. Uh, there's hour here and second here. So I need to know how to convert miles to meter and hour to seconds. So the first thing I need is, okay, well, how, how do I convert them, right? Uh, how do I convert miles to meter? Like how many miles is one meter or one mile is how many meter? Okay, so let's start off with that. Okay, so the first conversion I have is uh, one mile equals um, 16.09 meter, okay, approximately. Uh, how about one hour? One hour is how many seconds? 3,600 seconds. Right? So I can use these two relations to get my correct one. Okay, because I need a one to, in fact, I need two ones. Uh, what do I mean by that? Okay, what do I mean by that? So, remember, 65 miles per hour. So, I'm going to erase this part and rewrite it. Sixty-five mile per hour. Okay, I want to get rid of mile and get a meter instead. I want to get rid of hour and get second instead. So I'll multiply it by 65 remains the way it is times uh, mile or I can I don't need to put a multiply here 
mile per hour uh, I need to multiply the numerator by something that has a meter in the numerator and mile in the denominator so I can do it as uh, here I have to use 1 is 1609 meter divided by mile and here it's uh, 1 equals 3600 second divided by hour okay that's sorry uh, so here the 1 is 1609 meter by mile meter by mile and here 1 is 3600 second per hour so I can use that to convert this I can say my mile is uh, I need to get rid of the mile so I, I can multiply by this factor right I can say 1609 meter divided by mile multiplied by uh, in this case now I, my hour is in the denominator so I have to divide by this one Okay, so it's uh, 1 by 1 divided by 3600 hour divided by second. Okay, so I multiplied this by 1 and I divided this by 1, which is the same as multiplying by 1. So, as a result, what happened? This mile here and mile here, they're gone, right? Numerator, denominator. There's hour here and hour here, they're gone. Again, numerator and denominator. Now I'm left with meter divided by second. Okay, that's what I wanted, right? So I just need to combine these numbers now. And the numbers are 65 times 1609 divided by 3600 meter per second uh, which is what here now you can use the calculator here you can use Hopefully you can see this, 65 multiplied by uh, 1609 divided by 3600, which is 2905, so let's say 29. So it's 29 meter per second. Okay, this is the answer. So you see, to, to eliminate the unit that you don't want and get the unit you want, you need to multiply by the right, uh, right ones or, or right convergent factors. So this became, becomes essentially convergent factor. Okay, so in our problem solving session, we will do more of these just so that you get some hands-on experience doing it. Okay, so today we talked about uh, um, we talked about a bunch of things, right? Mostly, mostly theoretical stuff. Some number crunching we did at the end, uh, but we talked about the, uh, the the theory of how the SI system works, um, how it combined with the metric system. You can uh, use it for your scientific notation. Um, uh, how the why unit convergent is unit convergent is important and how to do it. Uh, so hopefully you learned something today. In my next lesson, we're going to solve some actual problem. Okay, so that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.